That's, that's true. The one, that's the only one we're really still missing. Let's see, like mm -hmm. this lobby in, 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 in general is pretty much built different, right? Look at the names in here. We actually like have like two players that are, like that have like footballing names to a certain extent. Right? You have Lalana, and then you have Tebby, who on ladder goes by the name of Iago Aspas, which I just think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Spanish from Galicia, <laughs> from the north of Spain. We have Balotelli as well. The Italian Scrap Mafia is here to represent. No more scrap in this set, but he's still obviously a very, very strong player from Italy. One of the players to watch out for on ladder and in tournaments as well. Any standout names for you makes in this in this list of players here? I mean, I think definitely you have to shout out Salvi, right? Salvi as one of our Golden Spatula Cup winners, one of the uh, German players with the longest tradition in competitive TFT, definitely a person to look out for. Then we have Kubikson, the player who we just heard of in the interview, who took Ultra Liga. He won first place. Mirage coming in here, Swell Sports and Sand Enchantment. I can't speak anymore. Um, so Kubikson, 15 years old, doing fantastic. I keep saying that, but it's just true and it's so impressive to me. And then, oh. of course, everyone else has been doing really well as, as well. Balotelli, Arad, Fabio Lotus, you know, all of these names are known. I feel like there's one important person that we, we, we're not really highlighting here. <laughs> huh. right. Same way that joke you had last game was great, Wido. This one, not not so much. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a, an honest and truthful person, and tell it to you straight. What I'm also gonna tell it to you straight is that this Olaf feels kind of bad. You have the whole slant towards AP right now. You have the lagoon start. You have the double rod as well. And finding the Olaf where you're kind of thrown into the opposite direction might not feel so bad. Where would you go with this, uh, Wido? It's gonna be an interesting one to to really figure out, right? Because for me. Um, a lot of it's going to come down with the items. I think that the Leona parent shop is really enticing to me when you are looking at Spell Source Enchantment as the Mirage. Oh, these are really interesting, actually, for Tubby. Because mm -hmm. Second Wind is fantastic. Catch all scale, augment. Preparation scale, 1 is scale, also scale. fantastic. The issue with the scale is gone, right? There's no 2 1 Olaf. There is no real good items on the bench for it either. Oh, the cloak is pretty good for skill score. You have yeah, a Wukong he, too. Do you believe Wida? That's what it comes down to. I mean, I believe in being prepared because I used to be a Boy Scout, right? And that's the. <laughs> okay. We need we need some Wida Boy Scout pictures. <laughs> are there pictures, Wida? Are there Wida? I mean, there probably are some somewhere. If I'm gonna do an Italy cosplay, I think it's the least you could do is share with the world your Boy Scout ten year old Wida photos. Come on. Actually, there actually is an issue with terms of GDPR though, because like there are other people in those pictures that we need to. Uh, All need right. To okay. Them. Okay. <laughs> Copying out as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh oh, I, I, uh oh, I mean, Morgan is very excited. What do we see on the augment choice for Salvi, someone that has piloted Shimmer Skill to success in the past? Could this be the game, Makes, where we finally get to see Shimmer Skill in the spotlight? I mean, you know, the thing with Shimmer Skill is that it's really hard to force. So, if all the stars align for Sully here, or all the scales, you could say, then he can oh, definitely no. drive this home. But Get me out. we need to wait <laughs> a little bit before we can actually go there. So, for now, good start for Sully for sure. Is going to get a little bit of extra board strength out of this, is going to get a little bit of extra gold out of this. So, super comfy spot to be in. But we don't know if he's going to drive the caravan all the way, right? So, so the thing that's worth noting here, right, is that we don't know exactly what it is, right? Like we're still lacking the um, what we critical do knowledge. I mean, he's, he's he definitely checked, and he's not going to be selling off his entire board. We could see him go level five, I believe, next turn, right? Just because of the fact he's going to be able to run that double econ setup. And the thing that we haven't really talked too much about, and this is thing we our first 7.5 event on the EMEA aspects. Shimmer scales in the early game now are actually units that can do stuff for your opponent. We talked about Jax a lot earlier, the two of us, David, right? Like just how mm -hmm. powerful Jax is. Nasus is a, is a fantastic guardian. For example, was brought in very well with the sack on the board, stuff like that. Like the units themselves are not like weighing down your board anymore. Mm -hmm. They are actively benefiting it. Ezreal here trying to get it done up against Talia and the Zac. Maybe a close one, but Ezreal, as I've mentioned many times today, one of my favorite damage carries in stage two, and proving why here just with one bow, able to get the attack speed, oh, able to get. Oh, 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 oh. All right! <laughs> what is that, dude? What is that? <laughs> well, it's a good I mean... start, Wido. When you believe in Shimmer Skill, Shimmer Skill believes in you. 
I love that Kubik Sun is just up there watching, being like, did, did this really just happen? Wait, what? And uh, Salvi, you know, <laughs> on the receiving end, he really just absolutely hitting. He has the blue buff, he has it for the front line as well. Like, he's gonna be free shiver next turn. <laughs> that is an absolute dream of an opener right now. Gonna be getting gold from both the Lagoon and the Shimmer skill as well when he's able to slot in that three Shimmer skill very, very soon with that Volibear already on the bench. So, really fantastic start for Salva here. And again, Salvi, a player that in GSE 1 1, he was able to win it. He played a lot of Volibear many, many patches ago. So, he's someone that knows how to play this carry, knows how to play Shimmer skill uh, to a very high extent. Something else I want to talk about is we just saw it. Kubikson is on the AFK augment. So while on one end of the lobby, we have Balotelli who went with Tiny Titans, has a lot of extra HP to work with. On the other hand, we have Kubikson who is going to bleed a lot in these early stages due to the fact that he's like not allowed to do anything, right? That's how the AFK augment works. So if you're seeing him drop a little bit low with the HP, that is why that's what's going on here for Kubikson. It's not that he's actively inting, but that he's actually getting a big, nice, econ benefit out of this. And Kubikson, my kind of guy. Prep, <laughs> no. Future Sight, no. But AFK, that is the augment I like to pick up. Hands off the keyboard for three rounds. That's perfect for me, especially when you have the Lost Streak starts when you're trying to force Nidalee reroll for the seventh time in a row and inting to zero LP. So an interesting question that, that comes up here is what do you do in those three rounds that you are not allowed to do anything? Do you just go make, make a cup of coffee or yeah, what focus do you do on with that time? Your nutrition, a nice healthy snack. You can do mm -hmm. maybe you know a few push-ups if you're looking to, to get into that bodybuilding aspect of things for a future Nidalee cosplay maybe. I call um, you know, lies that on kind that. Of, what? <laughs> I don't think there's a single TFT player who starts doing push-up in the AFK augment. But You'd okay. be surprised, Max. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard of players doing curls, but push-ups? I don't know. Okay, Shimmer Scale here is going to be um, needlessly big gem. And that's going to be... Uh, we saw, again, it's not the best one in the early game now, but it has been brought back down to believe that the trigger now is for each two copies of each two units. And with the uh, the state off this board, right, that's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of gold in the long run here for Sally because due to how tanky his frontline is, they're always just going to be like a lot of a lot of units of life. It should be pretty much guaranteed two gold each round. That one loss he had on two two is a little bit of a unfortunate occurrence, right? Because he would have been full streaking, would be expecting the full streak as well, but didn't really hit soon enough. It can happen like that. That's just how life goes sometimes. As you mentioned, maybe not the best Shimmer Skill item in general, but for that specific setup right now with that crazy good frontline, the ZZ Rot as well, I think it's going to work fantastically uh, because that damage will proc pretty much every single fight. Uh, we're going on to Lalana here, uh, a player that I am, um, and also a player that I speak to quite a bit, or like I'm in the, the same vicinity of a lot. Mm -hmm. He has been uh, somewhat tilted about the outcome of the games today. So looking for him now, now that he has a stronger opening to work with, which I think is going to be positive side here. Goes all in on trying to break streaks here, just maintaining his own. Goes all the way down to zero gold here, David. Yeah, this is a tricky one. I mean, you have the extra Econ from Lagoon, but uh, again, maybe valuing the win streak oh so much here. He has a strong frontline as well, has the Kai'Sa getting those stacks slowly over time. Um, overall, the board is looking pretty strong. I don't think anyone's really strong enough to contest him at this point. Just a quick note uh, in terms of what lobby this is. From the overall standings, all of these players are currently not qualified by points, so they're looking to turn it around in game number five and six. They don't need much to get there, but they will try everything they can to get into those top four placements to actually make their way into the 32 that move on to the next day. So all of these players are playing to get there, just like you uh elaborated a few seconds ago on Lalana. This holds true for this entire lobby, so we're maybe about to see some more aggressive player choices. Yeah, again, it's worth noting here someone like Lalana, he is currently uh, at 17 points, I believe, right? So a double top four should be enough to see him through uh, to tomorrow, right? Maybe like a, 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 fir a third and a fourth place position, stuff like that. So these players, they don't really have to go like 1-1 one, one to make it. It's not like they're going to be super desperate, but they do need a, at least a solid result in this game to have a chance. 
Heads up played by Lana, not combining these Kaisas until after the creep round is over to try and get those extra Lagoon stacks with two Kaisas on the board in that case against these Krugs. And now a very strong board finds a Jace all of a sudden in the level six shop, hmm. rewarded for maybe going six early on. I mean, that's a really good place to be in. I've talked about this, I think, prior to today. We're seeing so much guilt being kind of uh, flashed into every comp, and that's really what was intended for a guild as a trade. But just those two guilds, in this case, Ichuani and Jace, later on, people are going for Jace and Bart if they can. It's just so good, and wherever you can, you will play this, you will see this. We see players going for guild emblems, just getting that extra Omnivan. It's such a desirable trade that goes into everything. It's beautiful. Big fight here between Salvi and Alana. Salvi does not level to six at 3-1, not trying to defend any kind of win streak or, or trying to start a win streak, knowing that maybe he will face Alana. And Alana is quite strong with his current setup. And that will be the case here. Alana gonna able to take this win here. Salvi will take a pretty big hit despite his board strength, despite that shimmer skill start, despite all the two stars as well. And Alana will continue his win streak. Fabulotus joins him as well. Both players now win streaking in Sage 3. Balotelli, though, with Titan Titans still sitting atop the HP rankings with 110 HP. What are these augment choices, Wido? What do you think is going to be the option here? I mean, this is a rough one, right? It has to be the Bruiser Crest, yeah, for sure here. Just try to go for a four Bruiser setup when it becomes beneficial for you. Has to probably like, put the Chase, uh, put the Crest in the Chase here and just start cutting. This could be like just cutting the Lagoon. This is a hard spot to be in, honestly, for Lalana because you could just put it all onto the board now and send it to level seven. Cool. I'm but, seeing but, something that's scaring me as these augments come in. He's gonna do it. I, no, he's gonna do it. Oh, I would love to level seven. He's just gonna cut the, the Sejuani instead for mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It's like, kind of like, do you want the extra HP from the guild or not? So what's scaring you, Mace? Fabulotus picked up a Mage Crest. And the last time I saw a Mage Crest, it ended up on an ASOL, so uh, maybe we can in the future check in with Fabulotus just to make sure they're not running any illegal things here. I actually want to talk about Fabulotus for a second, right? Because for me, as someone who has uh, followed a lot of EMEA competition since the start of set free, right, when we had only direct ladder qualifications, um, Fabulotus is someone who has played a lot on the CIS server, um, has always had some, some kind of like middling performances, in my opinion at least, in that the... Um, in like the, the set finals and the regional finals, but seeing them perform well today here is actually a pretty big thing. It's a pretty big positive for me, right? Because it shows that a player has gone through like, like a lot of improvement, has also been putting a lot of work on the EU West ladder this time around. So it's like, I want to shout that out for a second. Yeah, for sure. Mage spat on the mall fight looks so up. I thought it would be sold there, but no. Gonna be kept online. Silas 2, mall fight 2. Astral opener, everything two star on this board. The win streak is starting to make sense to me. This is a very strong board now for stage three. And we'll see if Fabulotus is going to end up navigating this board to uh, make his favorite dragon, Aesol, for My a third favorite. game in a row. I love him. I love him so much. So uh, please don't show him to me. I'm going to get really, really shy if I see him. So <laughs> yeah, actually, on the other side of the board, we see Balotelli. Now, Balotelli went with that Tiny Titans. We spoke about it earlier. Now also has that extra healing coming through here. Lovely for him to have that second wind in. And the Karma in the back, she's doing a lot of work. Yeah, so Karma reroll is actually something we've seen some players like actually explore. This is not a Karma reroll angle from Balotelli. I want to highlight that. But Karma 2 as an item holder, especially when you are as a like, Tiny Titans, can actually carry you a lot further than you would expect. So depending on which AP carry he's going to lean into, um, that is definitely going to be an option that is going to be kept open here. So Forecast Spat here. Is that going to be enticing to anyone? Does Fabulotus want Double Mage Spat, for example? I think something that I want to talk about just very briefly is that I prefer Mage uh, Ao Shin to Mage Ao, so I think it's just much better. Mm-hmm. I, I would like to hit. see a Mage Ao Shin, but I think Ao Shin is currently very happy with the Dragon Mancers. Kubik's in now down to 52 HP. Of course, this is a player that picked AFK in Stage 2. Very, you know, on purpose, lost streak all of Stage 2, sacrificed the HP in order to get a lot of Econ. We'll see what he can do with this Econ coming into this possible level for 7 on 3-5. That is going to be the case here. We see it there. 
eighth place in the standings, but can he roll down? Can he stabilize? If we can go to Kibuzun's board, we'll find out. He's going for the Jade Whispers comp. It looks like the Wukong, unfortunately, will be yo yoinked out of existence the moment Shioyu is found. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pantheon already there, missing a Siphon, but overall has the goal to maybe just go eight instead, sack a little bit more, and, and just go for a roll down on eight, trying to two-star the Dragons and not lose too much Econ too early. Yeah, so this is a 4-2 angle, right? So there are different ways of going about when you play AFK. I prefer to go like 7 and 3-2. Sometimes you just roll it down depending on like how desperate the spot is. But Kvixen is a pretty good spot. He did go into 7. Yeah, but so. it's also worth noting here that Kvixen did win the first two fights off stage 3, which has given him a little bit more HP to work with, mm. and kind of opening up and feeling more safe about the potentially even the 4-2 angle rather than the 4-1 angle. And he's not so weak. Even if he loses some of these fights here, it's not going to be those those full board losses. It'll be, as we're seeing here, maybe uh, a few units left live, or maybe even just a win. The Wukong almost ends up surviving. Olaf, thankfully for Tebby, will buy, it looks like. The OK business oh. goes down. Karma ends up surviving with Umbrella there for Tebby. And Tebby is also angling towards that Jade combat, it looks like. That's like another Ooh, big dragon coming in. Big. That is lovely for Kavixa, and that's really what you were looking for, you know, that Jade Siphon slot in, something that's very desirable for our players. Whenever we see Jade more than not, there is a Siphon slotted into the comp as well to enable that additional Whisper bonus. So really, really nice pickup for him here on 3-6. Going to go into the next PvP round here as we move on. But Kubixen slowly but surely needs to find some wins. So let's see if that Siphon can actually do something for him. We're oh no. Wukong, Spock, the Wukong is in jail. Oh no. no. Finally, he has been released to Big unleash charge. his devastating bonks upon the world. Is it too little too late though? Wukong coming in with a whole lot of damage. Now, all of a sudden, three damage Wukong is very much a thing, but two damage Ezreal might. Oh, never mind. Oh, never a doubt the monkey. played on that Azrael, but Ascension <laughs> brought it home for Kubixon. Very, very close call here. And Arad does have a Zaya in the back as well. So probably looking to go for that swift shot rate wing angle here. I love seeing that. Very excited to see where he brings that comp. Now it's time for some extra items. And Fabuloto's actually finding out Vladimir 3. Yeah, so that Fabulous on an AP angle, right? That's kind of, again, when you have the Astros in there, just getting the, the Vladimir's out of the way can be quite beneficial. And again, something that's really interesting to watch here, we did have a brief economy by Blizzard G's situation here going on. Both Tappy and Capexon are very healthy, like, are very rich in terms of economy. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're going to expect to see some massive roll downs here, either on 4 1 or 4 2, to like kind of help them propel themselves back into the game. Yeah, Kubixen, I think, is definitely looking like a 4-2 angle with him being as rich as he is right now. Almost level 8 at this point without even going under that 50 gold threshold. Going to have 50 gold to roll with on the next round. Should be more than enough to find at least that Shioyu. Hopefully, ideally, maybe a 2-star oh. dragon, either Siphon or Shioyu. But Tebby is jumping in ahead of him. Finds a Pantheon 2 already. Both players are going to be contesting each other. And that might be problematic for both players, especially for Kubixen with Tebby rolling before him. Yeah, but Tepi is on Siphon Pair and a Shioyu in shop, right? So this is going to be... It, again, it's not necessarily going to be the south of a Kubixen, because Kubixen just needs like a couple of hits and he's fine, right? Like, he does have the Siphon already on the board. It could be stable enough, but this could be a situation where you might be a little bit surprised at what's going to come out here. I am so curious, because uh, Augments will be coming in after this round. We're currently facing off against Selby here on the side of Tevi. And Selby did find two Idises. Maybe this is the moment where oh, he's offered something whoa. shimmer, Scaly. It is prismatic Augments coming through for these players. So really, really going to speed up the trajectory of this lobby from here on out. I mean, what then, Sham? You love to see it, David. Am I right? You love to see two Pantheons just towering above on your board, ready to, to rain down on the enemy. Prepping the dragons here as well, waiting for the transition to happen because Tebby feels he's strong enough. He has a three win streak now anyway. The Econ is gone, but maybe he's oh. going to be strong enough now. Salvi also rolling it down here, found the Itis has... Cursed Crown. This is something. <laughs> I love how there's just like silence on broadcast. <laughs> Zoe is in his wall like, already. What? <laughs> yeah, like, again, like the thing is here that I need to see, right? I need to see the left side of the screen for the items here because that's going to be defining in terms of like which item, like which Shimmer item was not going to be presented here, right? 
So now having these Shimmer Scale items here again needs a little bit of luck for a Shimmer Scale, like for a nine Shimmer Scale angle to come through here. But seven Shimmer seven Shimmer Scale in its own right is actually a pretty okay setup here. And the Curse Crown as well is going to put on a lot of tempo here. Like just having like 10 years on the board right now does mean that he's, he's kind of not really sacrificing board strength to have this Shimmer Scale vertical like, active. I cannot believe Morgan comes in on day two, asks for nine oh, Shimmer Scale, and yeah. almost gets it before I see Nidalee reroll actually being played in the tournament. I'm very disappointed, but I think Salvi is not, because if he's able to hit this kind of champion, it's going to be so, so fantastic all throughout this stage four and five. One thing to note, Kubikson, 24 HP. Not sure how his roll down went, but he did pick up Knife's Edge 3, a very good combat augment for the combo he was going for. That Jade Whispers mix up with the Siphon and the Shio it's almost as if Morgan wished like an actual, like somewhat good composition there. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're gonna bring it back. Papi Lotus is on a tactician's crown as well, getting that extra board power just by sheer strength of army being brought into here. So the face-off between Salvi and Fabulotus very close here and Salvi will find another win. We should check in with Kubikson who like you said is on those 26. He did win the last round but first comes the carousel and I'm curious to see what Kubikson is going to take home. Pantheon with Cloak. See. It's a no-brainer I think. See what people can... have, and it will be the Pantheon, of course. Eret notably has a spatula on the bench as well. Might even be an upgrade if he has the pair right now, would build into potentially a, a Dragon's Claw. He's able to get the uh, second cloak on the Pantheon, or maybe he has another item already slammed onto that Pantheon. Uh, can be BT, can be Stoneplate, can really, you know, a lot of different items can work on this Pantheon. It would be a huge upgrade if that is going to be the two-star Pantheon, possibly. Hopefully, we can check out Kubikson. And yeah, it is two-star Pantheon, so perfect pickup for him. Benefiting from being first pick on the carousel. Is this board strong enough, Wida, to survive to make it past this 26 HP and, and hopefully make it into top four? I feel like it should be, right? Because you're looking at different things. Also, Balotelli, I think, is chasing Deja Free right now. Um, is he using his dice? Because he has three loaded dice and he just hit the Deja too. So, a, a, a fun thing here, I realize we don't have it on the board right now, but Deja is probably the dragon that's the easiest to hit with loaded dice. It's a 15% chance at level 8 on like most Mirage units. And that, that is incredibly high for a lot of dragons, actually. This is something that we need to uh, need to keep an eye out for. The mirror match coming keep down here. Keep an eye out. Yeah. Kubikson against Tebby facing off here. The dragons are dragoning around. There is a Gnar and the Pantheons are in a little bit of a mirror match, but it looks like Kubikson reigns supreme here with that Shio U2 fully itemized. Great items as well. That's where you want to be. And another Siphon in the store for Kubikson. Really, really good place. Ooh, two. Oh, that's a loaded dice being used, right? Two gone, one more to go for Balotelli. Only has five gold so far, but needs somewhat more of a front line. Yeah, the big thing here as well is worth noting now actually is that the Deja Dream is dead, right? Like Deja is still gonna, Deja is still gonna be incredible, right? Just as a, a holder here, but the aspect of like trying to get that Deja free is gone. It's just, it's just gone with the wind now. Gone with the wind. But there's wind actually blast. another dice. See what you did there, Balotelli, right? Is it, or is it a crit glove? There is, it's but you're still glove. so okay. many copies away, and you have so little gold. I mean, the gold right no, now. I thought for he Balotelli. might have had two but uh -huh. uh, it was a crit glove i'm i couldn't see it the echo here was in front of it but let's see how bellotelli does 10 losses in that's a lot of losses because he's facing up against tebby oh. here and that deja is fighting for her life can she take out the enemy pantheon before he does the same thing to her it's gonna be a thing that comes down to the needle but bellotelli finding an 11th loss Chaos Draken as well. I mean, we're just getting it all this game. Prismatic last arc, but into Chaos Draken. Like, all the expectations that these players have built up over the course of the first couple of stages, just fully gone now. Hoping to find some items here for the Yasuo, I imagine. Yasuo 2 star going to be fairly impactful at stalling out the fight for Deja to do its thing. Blessed Bloodthirster, 7 gold and a Magnetic Remover. Is that really enough to make that worth a pick with a glove on the bench as well? Looks like it might be. Blessed BC is pretty good. 
And you kind of just need more time being bought, right? And that the BT will do that either on the Yasuo or on the Terra. I was expected to go onto the Yasuo, right? But you never really know. Is still rolling, trying to find something here. Could at least hit the Rakan to have a little bit more of a front line going on to protect terra. that Deja. It's another Terra in the shop, but he needs to sell something off to actually buy it or lock the shop. Shop has been locked. He buys it nonetheless, has decided against it, and will get another shop refresh. Items also being slammed on that Yasuo now. So hopefully, hopefully he can find a win now. Let's see against who he's going to face, and it's Tebby, who's over there with a lot of dragons. Look at, look at Savi's bench though, Mix. Don't, don't do it to, don't do it like that, Wida, come on. Aesol is just there to... You know, my to... eye is starting to twitch? I don't know what this is. That's a bad sign for sure. I'm not a, you know, expert on, I'm not an eye doctor. Wait, what's, what's, what's the name for the eye doctor? It's a complicated word. Uh, no, it's, it's a very a, long word. Ophthalmologist, yeah, is that Yeah, opt yeah because opt optician is the one that makes the glasses, right? Well, I'm not that, but I definitely know eye twitching is not good, and, and Aesol sometimes does cause this, as does an Infinity Force, Dragon Claw, Bloodthirster, Shio Yu, wrecking havoc here alongside Pantheon. Gonna be oh. just barely able to get the win and the streak for Salvi as well, and it looks like both Kubikson and Tebby, 7th and 8th going to stage 4, hit their board and were able to stabilize. Balotelli has found another loss, 12 loss streak. On this board here, Mirage is not going strong for Balotelli. He had the tiny Titans as well, so a little bit of extra HP cushion, but it's just not doing anything for him. One copy short of that Terra. He needs anything, but with four gold, he can't find it. And he is going to go up against Salvi's board with the Curse oh. Crown and his transition into the... It's the full-on dragon party over here, right? The A the Asol being the carry of choice right now. Oh, that the is... The Shroud of Stillness also hitting right on that Deja. She will take forever to get her first cast out. It's coming now. It's doing some damage, but I doubt it will be enough to actually take something here. The Yasuo has fallen, and so will the Deja. And it's an eighth for Balotelli, followed by Lalana going seventh. And I think the high roller pickup just not impactful enough as a prismatic augment for for that to really, you know, I think it just didn't work out for Belatelli uh, to be a prismatic augment as a last choice. It kind of we saw it there the 12 loss streak coming into the late game, not where you want to be as a player in game five of this day two. That will be an eighth place for Belatelli. Fabi Lotus, someone that has been doing very well all throughout the game, still looking fairly healthy. Has a lot of three stars, has the Aesol online as well, and makes, I wish I had as much power as you do. You literally said, I hate Aesol. It is the six sure, dragons! Sure. Guys, guys, oh, guys, 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 dragons. guys, Get the camera, the dragons are ascending as we go into the first fight we've seen on stream with the dragons all ascending, six dragons on the board. Salvi, what a god. He's just the god of TFT right now, fully online. Let's watch this in all of its glory. I mean, if something is red and glowing, it means you should stay away from it. And that's exactly what this board is screaming to anyone else in this lobby. That will be so devastating for the other players, as every time you face Salvi, I don't think you can get a win here. It's just such a massively strong board. The items are great. He has everything he's looking for. And I, I, I don't know, I think it's a first for Salvi at this point already. And any player that had Salvi in their pool before that ascension happened is so lucky because everyone else is scouting this board and thinking, wait, really? Did this really just happen here? I mean, it's just wild, man. We're, we're supposed to talk about this, right? Like, I just can't. <laughs> We like, are like, in it's the like, presence it's... of greatness. Six dragons going on in round number five out of six in day number two of our Golden Spatula Cup number three. That was a lot of numbers, and I'm going to ask you something for anybody that's not familiar, because the trait is being hovered by observers. Thank you so much for that. The dragons ascend. Can you tell us with numbers what does this mean to these boards? More damage. I agree. Okay. I mean, like, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, okay, I'm getting it's, them right it's now. 40 stats, 40, 40 stats 80. on everything. That's 40 across the board here. Nightmare coming <laughs> Sorry. to the rescue. I didn't mean to 
just throw you under the bus. This is something where you put the four makes this is the biggest chase trade in the game that we're seeing in like game five and like the last golden spatula cut on the circuit. Sorry. Alright, yeah, gonna take a massive 40 hit. Fun everything across the board for these dragons. He has the curse crown as well. It's the only possible situation where you can go for the six dragons. And at this point, everyone else is just scrambling to make it through. Arid going out six tier. Tebby is on four HP, but the others are not far off. Kubixen on 16, Fabulotus on 39. It's all eyes on Selvi and who he's going to knock out next. And it's so much worse when you're facing that board from Salvi because these are all dragons. They all deal that extra damage as well if you end up getting a loss. So every loss is just 20 HP basically at this point in almost stage six. So it's very, very dangerous. We're gonna see who ends up having the bad fortune of facing Salvi. Only five players left now, Kubixen and Tebby. Both players going for the same comp. Both players able to get it and both players still alive. But now Tebby facing off against Highlight, against Zaya. Yeah, I mean, Tebby could be knocked out here. He needs to try and take out the Zaya that's in the back line. She's ramping up. Rageweight is going over 20. Now the Shiyou in target will get diced out by those feathers fly coming out from Zaya. Zaya will find the win here. And that is it for Tebby getting knocked out fifth. That's a top four for Kubixen, you know, like... It's looking good for my picks overall, right? Part of ball also fairly high up the standings already before this round, I do believe. So, uh, gotta get that out there as well, just for the for the sake of it here. Morello, though, not exactly ideal. Not what Kabixen would be looking for right now. Doesn't have a good apl applicant of it, right? Like, more like like an actual Yasuo item instead, probably. Yeah. Yeah, if you had to build with the, the Gnar and the Jace instead of Yasuo Soraka, that would be a much better uh, angle. But now going to stage six, you have the five costs online instead. And as you mentioned, Wida, maybe not the best spot uh, for that Morello, but you have gold to go nine at this point. Maybe you have a better unit to slot in that can actually carry this Morello and find some use for it. Lux free for Fabulotus and Salvi also hits that Shivana too now. So some, some, is, is that a five? <laughs> He's oh, just okay. going, you know, Shio Yu to Shivana to what? Hey, Shin to Shin to just uh, Salvi. It's okay. You won this round when you ascended to six dragons. No need to rub it in our faces. We are aware of this power that's currently being displayed. But Fabulotus and Kubixon will fight it off here. And Fabulotus could also get knocked out here if things go right for Kubixen. So let's see how this goes. The Lux in the bottom left corner will ramp up slowly but surely, but every time she gets one of those casts off, similar to the uh, Asol in the middle, it will hurt a lot. And the Shio Yu, it's just, she's not really able to get there first. Now on to the Lux has arrived and getting taken out. Kubixen actually turns this around after a longer losing streak. And now both of them are single digits, three and one HP. Also, Fabulotus has triple dummy on the board. He took a triple dummy Chaos Dragon. Like, how wild is that? I mean, you really want to stall out. You'd normally do it with ZZ Rot on the Silas, but instead you have the dummies, it, you know, achieves the same purpose, trying to buy more time for those Aesol casts, for those Lux casts as well with his Astral setup. Someone in chat was saying that Aurelion Sol was ready to throw hands, not cast <laughs> tank items. He's just a beefy boy not getting stonked out. But here we go, Salvi on the other side of the board. If you are curious what a six dragon board looks like, there is nothing you can do against this. I will not be uh, changing my mind on this. I don't think you can put anything up against the six dragon board. And Salvi will find another win here, completely destroying Kubixon in his way. Fabulous Fabulotus being able to hold on for one more round. Now Highlight and Fabulotus are both on one HP and Salvi might just knock them out both if someone gets his copy. And unfortunately, what's coming up is probably the least exciting final fight in the game of TFT in all the time we've been casting because <laughs> as you're saying, Mix, I don't think there's anything that beats six dragons. It's, it's in the game for a reason. It's supposed to be one of these chase traits, the, you know, the chase trait of all chase traits. I don't think anything can be done here. Trout as well in the Shivana, able to, you know, slow down all the cast coming in from Highlight's board. 
I love that Salvi is still at this point in time positioning so the Shroud of Stillness actually hits that Lux in the back line. Fabio Lotus is probably just throwing his hands up thinking, all right, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything here. Look at the power of those dragons as they just come on through and deal massive amounts of damage to anything in their path. Minus 20, minus 22 to both of his enemies. Salvi takes round number five in our Golden Spatula cup day number two this is what a game honestly man like what a game